Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us. Um, welcome again to the program, Shagalinku TV. My name is Ambassador Emmanuel Gabari, and um, thanks to everyone who constantly join us every time we come here to do our programs on Tuesdays and um, Saturdays, 2 p.m. West African time. Um, last week, Saturday, we were here to talk about uh, human trafficking and um, how it relates to sustainable future. We had two guests last Saturday, the last edition of our program. Onello Nana was here from Dublin, and um, Mr. Paul was also with us from Mombasa, Kenya, and we talked extensively about human trafficking and how we can stop it. On today's edition of the program, Tuesday it is, and um, I hope everyone is ready and waiting for us. My guest is also here. We'll be looking at the incessant rise of gender-based violence, what we can do to stop it, the causes, and probably the solutions and all of that. Um, he's well vast in this field. I'll let him introduce himself, and then we'll go on to ask our questions. And for those of you watching, um, you, all you need to do is just join us on the comment session, click um, the comment session, drop your questions, and um, my guests will be here to answer them. Good afternoon, doctor. Good afternoon. Good to see you, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, um, for, <laughs> it's been quite some time. Yes, yeah, really We're happy quite to some touch time. Base again, I'm happy about yes. that. Good, good to have you here, sir. Um, over the pandemic period, COVID-19 has also not helped issues. While a lot of organizations are busy trying to um, find ways to reduce gender-based violence, um, COVID-19, the pandemic, and a whole lot of other things, which um, the um, UN call the pandemic, um, the shadow pandemic, is also not helping in terms of gender-based violence. But I would like you to first introduce yourself, what you do, um, where you're from, so that our guests all over the world can connect with you, and then we'll go on to talk about the topic of discussion. So over to you, sir. Yeah. Um, my name is Dr. Chris Ugu. I'm the executive director, Men Engage Nigerian Network, as well as the executive director, Society for the Improvement of Rural People, we're based again here in Nigeria. So um, as a network, men engaged network, we are concerned about you know, ensuring that we reduce gender inequalities, reduce gender violence, prevent HIV and AIDS, promote the health and well-being of women, girls, boys, and men. And uh, of course, we also try to ensure that we end gender-based violence in the whole of Nigeria. Mm. Mm. And, and um, so how nutshell, has the fight the... been? Yeah, how has the fight been? Because I hear you talk about gender inequality, um, especially in the African context yeah. when men never feel they are wrong. You know, from, from small, a child is groomed to be the supreme. Even when his elder sister is 10 years or 15 and he is three years, the parents and the society has already groomed the mindset of the boy child that he's always supreme, he can never falter, he can never go wrong. How has the fight for gender equality been for you, sir? Yeah, it has been very adverse, it's been very gargantuan, it's been very uh, huge. Um, because, of course, recall again that Nigeria and, and indeed Africa is a, run a patriarchal system. Uh, mm. a system where men are preferred or boys are preferred to females for whatever reason. But again, these are all issues of stereotypes for which as an organization and as an individual activist, we are working to ensure that, that par a paradigm shift is created where we begin to think of women and, women and girls as equal partners with men mm. and boys. True, 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 very true. This um, situation has like exacerbated... Go on. Yeah, I, I like that part that um, we are beginning to realize that Africa and even Nigeria is so patriarchal in nature because this is why we keep having the rise 
in gender-based violence. And I'll, I'll let you talk to us about what gender-based violence means for maybe someone who's just joining us and does, doesn't know what it is before we even go to the courses and what we can do to solve it. But another thing I also need you to um, address for us, well, maybe when you talk about gender-based violence, um, we will also know, because people always look at gender-based violence from the angle of the men violating the women. They are also not saying that sometimes, even if, if the percentage is low, there are a whole lot of men who are also violated. And maybe why the percentage is low could be as a result of men not also summoning courage to report or cry out loud the way women do. So please, I'd like you, doctor, to take us through what gender-based violence is, and then we'll come back to that. Yeah, I think there are this misconception about what gender is all about. Sometimes when yeah. you talk about gender, people think about females. But the reality is gender has to do with both men and women. And female, yeah. To that extent, therefore, yeah. So to that extent, therefore, when we talk about gender-based violence, we're also talking about violating men and violating females. Uh, just a week ago, um, here in Enugu, we registered a man whose stock in trade was violating young boys. And like O'Reilly pointed out, sometimes we don't hear about them, uh, mostly because uh, given our patriarchal system, men are not expected to uh, exhibit emotions or even report such cases. But the reality is that it does exist. However, the preponderance, that's the rate, is more with females than it is with uh, males. Uh, having said that, gender-based violence is all, every activity, every action taken to violate somebody's human right, to violate somebody's gender identity, to violate somebody's gender independence. Anything to do that will violate the human person is gender violence, based violence. Mm. Mm. Beautiful one, sir. Uh, well, in case you're just joining us, the program is Shagalinko TV. It comes your way every Tuesdays and Saturdays, 2 p.m. West African time. And for all of you that watch us across the globe, we sincerely thank you. You can be part of this show as we talk with Dr. Chris Ngu, um, all the way from Enugu, Nigeria. We're looking at um, the incessant rise in gender-based violence, cases of gender-based violence. You could drop your comments on the comment section, and we'll read them as the program progresses. Remember to also like all our social media handles, it is at Chagalinko TV, and we'll respond to you. Okay, I'll come back to you, doctor. There, there is um, still a debatable uh, part where it's, it's been controversial for a whole long while, and you, have, you, have, you are very vast in some of this field work, and I need you to also talk about it, since we're even talking about gender-based violence. Can a man violate his wife? Because we've had issues during the pandemic situation. In fact, um, there was a video... There's a video that went viral when a woman was running on the streets. The man was pursuing her for the other room matter. So can a man <laughs> violate his wife? And can a woman say, it is my body at any point in time? I don't want the other room matter. The man uh, feelings shouldn't be there. Because it's always been controversial. Women say it's their right to their body. And the men say, we paid the diary. If you don't want us to also have right to the body, then don't collect diary and all that. Please put put um, a, a word for this. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you, Ambassador. Um, the reality is that, you know, like you really pointed out, there was a time that I mean, it went viral and about a man who was pursuing his wife um, because, he, according to him, uh, he has a right to his her body. She repaid the diary. In other words. In quotes, he owns the the, 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 the wife. The woman, uh, Again, yeah. it's all part of the particular notion that we have that has become um, stereotypic with us, And but it's wrong. It's very, very wrong. We must recognize, yeah, it's very, very wrong in every, 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 every consideration. The reality remains that the female owns her body. In any case, sex is something that has to do with emotions. You can't abuse verbally a female and in the night you want to force her to have sex with you i mean it's mm. it's, it's 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 yeah it's inhuman and so to that extent we deprecate that uh, kind of behavior and we we, we we resist it and we advocate against it and we, we we take it up even with law enforcement agencies when such occurs and the report is brought to our notice okay beautiful one so everyone listening now or watching us 
You have heard it from doctor. He's an expert in that field and he's telling you that the woman's body is her body. It doesn't matter whether you pay the bride price or not. It's still her body and she needs to give consent at every point in time. Okay, doctor, I would like you to take us through um, some types of gender-based violence so that what people should look out for. Because sometimes the truth is, even on the field, you still find people who don't know that their rights have been violated. You still find people who don't even know that what they are going through is gender-based violence. You still find people who do some things to other people and don't realize that they are violating the other person. So I'd like you to take us through maybe a few, because I know there's a whole lot of them, but maybe a few things uh, people should look out for that could be classified as gender-based violence. Yeah, there are so many types of gender-based violence. The one that is predominant in this part of the world uh, is the issue of female genital mutilation. People don't recognize that this little girl, about three, four days old, has a right. Mm. And you mentioned something, principle, one principle that is very cardinal in everything that has to do with sex, and that is the issue of consent. Now, when you now go ahead to violate a little girl by cutting her clitoris, which is a very sexual part, a very, very sensitive part of her body, without her consent, number one. Number two, that you didn't, you, you, you are exposing her to a lot of health implications to say nothing of her human and sexual rights. So to that extent, female genital mutilation is one of the gender-based violence we record. The number two is rape. Again, when you go out of your, if somebody goes out of his way to get somebody to have sex, to have sex with him or her without, very important, her consent, it is rape. I want to thank God for the advocacy work we've been doing in this part of the world. Enugu State now, Enugu State of Nigeria now have violence against persons prohibition law of 2019. It was just passed last year. And I, I, with all modesty, we were part of the process that made it to happen in Enugu State. Now, the meaning is, if anybody does inflict pain by way of female genital mutilation on any girl, you are liable to an imprisonment of four years. Wow. Oh without option of fine. Rape, if you are caught and it's proven, that one is almost like life sentence. Because it, it, is, it is an abuse of somebody person, somebody's person. It's an abuse mm. of his or her sexual rights. It's an abuse yeah. of a human person. Yeah. And yeah. it's... it's Another one is child marriage. People may not see it as a sexual, but the reality is that it's all part of rights of females. A poor girl, because she's coming from a very poor background, and you just give her out in marriage before the age of 18. It has been criminalized also in the Enugu State Violence Against Persons Prohibition Law. These are just, I'll be talking more on other aspects of such violences. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Okay. Thank um, you very much, sir. We'll, we'll take a few comments we'll, now, we'll take a few and comments then I'll now. come back to ask you um, and the role men engage has been playing, what men engage Africa is, and what men engage Nigeria is, and some of the things they do. But let's um, quickly take a few comments here. This one is from Nelson Semano, all the way from Ghana, and he says this is a great show. Thank you, Nelson, for that uh, message. And um, he sent another one. He says, keep it up, bro. Um, Still from Nelson in Ghana. Thank you very much. Um, God is one here from Tomto. Um, he says, great discussion. He says, great discussion. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you very much. Another one from Nelson, the third time all the way from Ghana. He says, useful discussion. useful discussion. Um, this other one, um, Odion Nyema med Medratrix, med it's a very, very educative. Okay, thank you all. Keep okay. your comments coming. You uh, we'll your comments be reading coming. them as the program goes on. Doctor is here to on. also respond Doctor to any of your questions. Um, just to also uh, see that you can like our see social media handles. It is at Chagalinku TV. Every Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're here to um, do all that. Okay, Doctor, I'd like you to talk more about uh, Men Engage, what okay, they do. 
Yes, and ev- um, some of the interventions the that they've been do, doing. And ev- um, some of the interventions that they've been doing. Okay. Uh, Men Engage Alliance is the global platform for Men Engage. And then you now have regional outfits uh, like Men Engage Africa. And um, Men Engage Africa has their national networks. Nigeria Men Engage Network is one of such um, national networks. Basically, Men Engage Network is a network of civil society organizations that are working with men mm. to achieve four basic principles or basic objectives. Number one, to reduce gender inequalities, to prevent HIV and AIDS, to promote the health and well-being of women, girls, boys, and men. And then finally, to end all forms of gender-based violence. So these are the four cardinal objectives of Men Engage Networks. And here in Nigeria, we regard this as an article of faith. We, 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 we internalize it, we practicalize it, and we have the good pleasure of being one of the beneficiaries of the grant support from Sunke Gender Justice under the CEDA grant. CEDA is wow. Swedish International Development Agency. And wow. we've just done the work for one year. We are, by the grace of God, we are going to start again this year, um, this July. So what have we done in the past? We've been able to, number one, we have worked in three zones of Nigeria. South, West, North, Central, South, East. And what did we do? We tried to work based on a SWOTS analysis we conducted on our members to know what mm. is the prevalent sexual abuse case prevalent in a particular zone. And we're able to identify, for instance, issues of LGBTI in the North Central, child marriage, female genital mutilation. This was across board. And so we have been able to implement programs that will address these challenges in these various zones. We had a baseline situation before the intervention. The prevalence rate of female genital mutilation in Enugu State, for instance, is 75%. But with the intervention we've made, we have seen a reduction. At least, People can now talk about it. Hitherto, it was sacrosanct. It was something, it's a, it's, a, it's a taboo for anybody to talk about issues of female genital mutilation. It was a taboo for people to mention that they've been raped. But today, because of these interventions, people are beginning to speak up. Sometimes when people talk about, oh, it's like there is an increase in the number of domestic violence, issues of rape, female genital mutilation since COVID-19. I say, yes, it could appear and I use the word, it could appear that there are an increase. But the reality is that for the first time, based on our advocacy work, people are beginning to report these cases. So it looks like, oh, it's like increasing. It's just a little bit there. But the reality is that people were suppressed not to say anything about these things, which they considered a taboo against the social norms. Wow. Wow. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing um, to know the um, huge work Thank you, that um, Men Engage is doing. Okay, I'll come back and take a few more messages here while um, we'll talk to you on the, um, uh, very soon. That, um, Men Engage this one is we'll from Finia Mwabu uh, Dwali. This one it's a be- beautiful Finia discussion. Great work, Ambassador Dr. Barry. Good to hear Dr. Chris speak on this issue. That's amazing. Thank you, Finia. Thank you, Finian. Finian. And, um, Thank you, Finian. Um, 
I got um, some more messages. I got um, um, some more messages. Though it was on the flyers um, yeah, when we flyers, posted yesterday uh, and the first today. Quite lengthy, but I'll try and read them Quite quickly. Lengthy, this one is from Tina Wim. This one is from it Tina Wim. It one is, of the causes of gender-based violence, gender violence, is the GBV, unequal is the status unequal of women and men. E.g., e the belief men. that women and children e are under the, the control of the man, and, and the woman should always depend on the man. Solution, create awareness of the poor condition of women in the rural community. Two, Engage women to participate women in political process, value and women vote. And women Three, votes. promote peaceful resolution, promote of, peaceful disputes. resolution of disputes. Create, disputes. Laws, that create laws, laws that protect women from violence, from violence rape, from violence, trafficking, rape, and all that. And this is from um, Tina. This is from, um, Tina. Um, Doctor, um, will, there's a message from... Martin from, um, um, from Amsterdam, um, but I will read that after this Amsterdam. question I have for you. But I will read that um, after this question I have for you. Okay. Um, Tina um, brought Tina, out a very resilient point about women point being about in women politics. Being because in politics. every time we talk about women because taking their space in the political sphere, it's, it's, it's it's strange, it's strange when men talk issues of women. Issues when the women are not allowed to also have political wheels. You know, we we keep seeing the decline of women participation in politics as the dispensation goes on. So, what do you have to say about this? Because this really raised a very important point. If we have more women in the political space, they be able to push for policy change and to enable and encourage and you know deepen what other NGOs like yours you know, have been doing what so what do you have to say like about women involvement doing. in politics yeah thank you very much ambassador um there's a local proverb in my area uh says you cannot cut a man's hair in his absence cannot cut a man's hairs in his absence. In other words, I completely agree with uh, Nina in terms of what he has just mentioned about the fact that there is a declining percentage and number of female participants in our political process. We did a piece of work where we did an analysis of the number of females from 2015 till date in our state assemblies, state houses of assemblies. Data for the federal, the, the national assembly, and successively every year, every electoral cycle, we notice that there's a decline in number of persons, number of females in the national assembly. Data for the state assemblies also, and you ask yourself, how can there be change when we do not allow our women, especially competent and very very knowledgeable persons, to be part of the governance process? It's a shame, but then that throws again more challenges to civil society rights organizations in Nigeria. To be stand up and be counted, the time has come when we need to make a real deliberate effort. In this context, I'd like to congratulate such, a, such um, development partners at the European Union and all that, who have been supporting us in the issues of democracy and governance. Because the time has really come to allow and grant women space in our electoral process, in our political process, in our governance process. It's only this that we can begin to talk about gender equality. Otherwise, we are just paying lip service to it. Mm. Mm. That's, mm. that's a beautiful um, mm. answer, Doc. That's a beautiful and um, answer, I'm learning Doc. so much, and, and I know our viewers are also and doing and that. Viewers are also OK, doing I will. Um, OK. Let I'm me take that message from Amsterdam, and it's from and it's mm, from Martins, very Martins, lengthy one, but then I will lengthy, just try and read it all. It's a while discussing the problem of gender-based violence, causes and solutions, we often focus on women as the only victims. That's why I would say is that I would say is doing a great disservice to men. Women have the 
the proclivity to cry out to call reports issues arising from violence caused by men it is natural for most women to complain when they are treated badly by their spouses that i think leads to more awareness on this topic and the tilting of the balance towards women Topic. As is often and the, the case, of the balance, but we women. often overlook the, often rising the, case, the, the rising trend of yes, violence against men. Yes, because men can sometimes stomach their, pains, their unlike pains, unlike women. Unlike men women. feel embarrassed men to lodge complaints about their complaints spouse's violence their towards spouse's them. Violence in many them. homes, women in many are homes, living... Okay, in many homes, men... Mm -hmm. are living like house boys are living like house boys their home feels like their hell on earth like hell on women eggs. maltreat them women but they enjoy them, it but they, enjoy they keep it. pushing till they, they are dead till they are it dead. may surprise you to hear so that a lot of women bear a lot of women beat up their husbands even with weapons <laughs> inflicting Grievous bodily harms. Grievous but the man comes harms. out to tell people it was a domestic accident. It was a domestic we accident. only get to hear violence we against men, violence mainly against when men. the woman kills the man. When the woman kills the man. And then he goes on, is a lengthy one, so please bear with me. Then he says, Men in this generation are suffering untold hardship, but in silence. Better little silence. wonder we have a lot little of wi widows. We have a lot of wi widows. The women, the men often the die women, from numerous deaths. They, they have been exposed to in their own homes, physical, emotional, psychological. You name them. I will them. open here. I will open that here. the guest takes deeply, takes okay, talks deeply, deeply okay, talk into deeply violence against into men violence with against equal men, emphasis with as a that of women. As a that of Best women. way to reduce Best these violence are one. Through men and women Through economic men empowerment. And women economic empowerment. Two, real, reorientation Two. in the real, areas of gender in roles. In areas of gender men roles. should not be seen men as the sole provider. Women should not be Women seen as housewives. House Lastly, education and enlightenment need to be understood. Human rights and laws of the land. <laughs> Quite a lengthy That's one. <laughs> yes, it's, oh, uh, that is worth it. Doctor, please re respond to this. Doctor, please re respond to this. Yeah. Um, uh, first, I'd like to congratulate and thank uh, the author of that beautiful uh, comment. Um, I couldn't agree more with him. But you see, that's part of the things we're doing, what we call positive masculinity. Positive masculinity. Oftentimes, we've, we may not been nurtured to think that they are very strong for whatever reason. And that is why when certain things happen, they say, oh, don't cry. Don't, don't you know you are a man? Don't cry. Yeah, man. Don't, um, yeah. you are <laughs> don't cry like a don't woman. Cry. <laughs> meanwhile, uh, <laughs> meanwhile, psychologists believe to cry is to make less the depth of grief. You see, when you cry out, when certain things happen, it lessens the degree of the heartache and depression you will suffer if you keep suppressing such incidents. So I completely agree with him that it's be, because of our upbringing, men don't usually think that they're very strong, but the reality is that nobody is actually strong in the final analysis. We are basically yeah. the same. So if you refuse to express your emotions by crying or showing uh, tenderness to your wife or your children, you are doing yourself terrible disservice. Because you want to show that you are the owner of the house. When your wife is more competent, has better salaries, and you don't want to accept that reality. You still want to keep, keep saying that, oh, I'm the man of the house, I provide. Those, those paradigms need to be changed. Mm. It's all about collaboration. It's about partnership. Mm. It's about understanding each other. So that you might live long. True. Because like True. he rightly pointed out, True. True. in most, most congregations today, you find that we have more widows than widowers. 
The reality is that they have more longevity because of their emotions. Women are by nature wired to always cry out, express their opinion, say things the way they want to say it. It might be wrong. That's not the issue. The issue is that they've just saved their mind. But we keep suppressing our feelings and in the process we are dying slowly. Mm. May God help us. Amen yeah. to your prayer. Amen. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got a message here from okay, London. Here this from is from London. Shepi Moore. It, it, says, Shepi Moore. Charity it says charity begins at home. Charity begins. Thank you, um Shepi Moore. It's good to know you are watching us all the way from London. We sincerely appreciate it. So, um, doctor, can you re respond to this um message? Charity begins at home. How true is this? How true is this? Yeah, it's a very good uh, aphorism. It's a very good um, cliche. The reality is that charity must begin at home. What does that mean for us as men? What does that mean for us as families? What does it mean for us as countries? The reality is we must begin to practice what we preach. Mm. I mean, it's no use. The way I do, otherwise it becomes just mere platitude. Most men who are gender activists, watch them at the, in their homes. They, they, they still batter their wives. They still mm. fight their, 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 their female children, want to send them on, you know, on, on marriages, when, even when they are not up to 80 years of age. So the meaning is that we must practice what we preach. It's only then that people can begin to take us serious. Otherwise, it might just be seen as people who are just pretenders, and that's not a very good appellate for us. Mm. Okay. Thank you. So in case, in case you just joined us, the program is Shagalinko. Okay. I must say you've missed it. Yes. Go on. You wanted to say something, sir. Go on. You wanted to say something. Yeah, I wanted to say something. That I want to completely agree with them. The we, how do we deal with issues of gender-based violence? And the, is you know we, we must begin to see um, those role stereotypes. You know that we not sure to uh, believe. You know you are the provider of the home, even when you have no job, and so you, you still want to. Instead of deferring to your wife and see how things might begin to work better, you, you still want to pull your shoulders up. And in the process, <laughs> you begin to be abusive. Yeah, we must recognize that. We must also, um, also work, see how we can develop messages that will ensure and enhance a gender equality and equity in our homes. Wow, beautiful one. Thank you, sir. Um, we're still on here. And do remember to like our pages um, on, on Twitter, on, on Instagram, it's at Shagalinku TV. We come every Tuesday and Saturday with topics and bring guests to talk about them. Okay, um, doctor, I'd, I'd like you to also, while we try um, wrapping up now, I'd like you to try and provide some solutions. Could it be that in the fight against gender-based violence, we are one step forward and three steps backwards. Because what we've also noticed from the field is that even when you bring psychosocial support, um, free uh, lawyers who are ready to do pro bono for women who are going through violence, you still find the women uh, at like the end of the day balance. saying they don't want to and um, they can't leave their because husband uh, who will take care of their children. And then the man keeps beating like them until support, she dies. Um, so We've also found issues where a rape case happens. You bring um, you, you bring um, support for these victims or the family. You come the next day so they could go to the police station to file the case and all that. And the story changes. Maybe the perpetrator comes behind and bribes the family. And shockingly, you hear the parents say, nothing like that happened. I mean, we didn't complain to you that um, anyone raped our daughter. Nothing like that happened. So what can we begin to do differently to make sure that even the victims are able to also seek help? Because a lot of times, stigma is one of the reasons why families and victims don't even want to seek for any redress or anything. And they say, ah, the, 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 the victim will not get married. The woman uh, family will stigmatize her that ah, she has left two marriages. You can see yeah, what is even happening with the minister where he's abusing the former MD that she has had four, four husbands before. And I'm wondering what has that got to do with somebody competent in doing a job. But these are just practically some of the, the things women face. So men see them as surface level and not see them for the kind of work they'll be able to do. I mean, there's a, a levy of corruption levied against someone and you're not addressing the issue you are bringing and telling us that the woman has had four husbands. 
Does it make her any less competent to another woman who's never had a husband and all that? So, what's your take, sir? The woman family that she has left too much energy business. You can see what is it? Even have with the minister where he's abusing the former MD that she has had for more yeah, hearing me competence in doing a job. Okay. These are just practically some of the, the things women face. Mm. So men see them as surface level and not see them for the kind of work mm. they're able to do. Absolutely. I mean, there's a, le a level of corruption against someone. Okay, Doc. And then not addressing the issue you are Go on, sir. <laughs> Competent. Yes, Doc, we need you to respond. I know it's been waving, you know, the network sometimes just waves our response. So what's your take, sir? No, it's, it's, all, it's all part of the uh, societal stereotypes, and we need to break those gender norms. Again, we must put in perspective that there are, we, we are, we, this is, remember that Okay, um Doctor has gone off, um, so we'll um, wait slightly for him to come back and join us. So, um, Doctor, is the PT your network went off? Um, I noticed it was vibrating and echoing or waving off the network. So we're still here, and we're looking at gender-based violence, the rise, the causes, and what we can do, all of us. So right now, it's, it's about all of us because it's also becoming a pandemic of its own, rape culture, um, gender-based violence, um, domestic violence, um, a whole lot, molestation and all that. And it's a good thing that Dr. talked about um, the VAP being also um, being a law in um, Inugo State and all that. So it's yes. a good one. Okay, Dr., you are back? Yes, I'm back now. So Please I want go to on say and yeah. that part of our mandate as Men Engage Network is to work with men and boys to begin to break this kind, of, yes, to break this, to break these jinx, as it were, where we begin to see women only on the basis of sex, it, while not even thinking about their competence, their abilities. That is the mandate and commitment of men engaged in Nigeria to begin to break all this stigmatization that go with all this humiliation that go with that women suffer, because the reality. Nations that do not accord respect to women, even their GDP, their gross domestic product, is affected. Does it then tell you why most of the African countries are very poor? It's because we have not recognized the innate abilities, competencies, and skills which women bring on the table to enhance our gross domestic product. The time to stand up and be counted is now, and we must do that. Wow. Well. Thank you very much, sir. Um, I'll take this message here. It says, good response from Dr. Chris. Um, that is from... Uh, Sorry, are, are you... The, yeah. Go on, sir. You wanted to ask something? Yeah, I was... No, no, no. I was just want to know whether you are hearing me at all. Yes, I am. I'm perfectly are you hearing, hearing you. Yes, oh, okay. yes. Oh, fine. So, yeah. so the challenge... The challenge for Men Engage Africa, the challenge for Men Engage Alliance, the challenge for Men Engage Nigeria remains to break all these negative social norms, negative masculinity that has so beclouded our society that our gross domestic product as a nation is suffering a decline on a yearly basis. The time mm. to act is now.
Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. In, um, we're still here talking about gender-based violence, the rise, the causes, and ways we can put a stop to it. And my guest for today is Dr. Chris, all the way from Enugu State, Nigeria. Um, I got this message here, and um, it's from Odionyema Mediatrix, and it says, good response from Dr. Chris. Um, some talk came back again a second time and says, great response is being offered so far to all the questions by Dr. Chris. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Thank you. Um, Odionye Ma came back again a second time and says, wish to commend Dr. Chris Ugu and the entire Men Engage Nigerian team on their giant stride towards ending female genital mutilation in Enugu State. Well, it's a commendable one. And thank you, sir, for doing a very good job um, towards um, that. And um, we thank you very much. Okay, we're still on here. While we're trying Thank to wrap you. up, sir, yes, um, I, I would like you to also tell us um, a little more about um, the, the way forward, you know. Um, what, what should we begin to do as a way forward um, to um, synergize, to collaborate, and keep it up? All right. Thank you very much. Well, the, the way forward, number one, as a network, as a men engaged network, we need to uh, keep working together. We need to start creating more awareness of uh, the Nigerian Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act of 2015 in our various, in our various uh, zones and states. Um, and encourage our state also to adopt Hello, sir. Hello. Um, I think um, Dr. Chris went off there. And okay, we went to enforce. Okay, okay. You're back. Okay, Dr. Chris, if you can hear me. Oh, and we've we gone off again. Them. So, I'll quick. Yeah. Okay, you are back, sir. So, uh, yes, um, could you continue from where you stopped? Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Oh, dear. I'm sorry. Okay. We can have you now, sir. We can hear yes, you. Yes, can. Okay. So please go on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just want, yeah, I wanted to say that number one is to congratulate your organization for arranging this. Number two is to encourage our network members, Nigerian Men Engage Network members, to begin to work together and then pursue okay. the adoption of the violence against persons prohibition law in our various states and various zones. Number two, to begin to break all these negative masculinities that are so beclouded our environment that people begin to see that women are all as equal um, as men. And then mm. number third, the third one is to stop all forms of gender-based violence. It's not in our interest. It's not in our interest of our economy. It's not in the interest of our families. It's not in the interest of our nation. Thank you very much. Wow, thank you. I'll, I'll come back to you shortly to uh, maybe say a word of greetings to your team and other organizations that have been showing support. But there are some messages here I'll quickly like to read. And then if you have responses okay. for them, you please do. And then we, we wrap okay. up the program. This one is from Muzamil. And it says, okay. what causes gender-based violence is lack of anger control between male and female. Solution is to give emotional motivation in social life. Uh, thank you, Ms. Amil. Another one from Ame Bayo says, one of the causes of gender-based violence is lack of understanding between the man and the woman folk. And then um, another message just dropped here on the other line, and it's from Imelda Ujelo Kalo, and it says, great response. Thank you, Dr. Chris. Okay, that's from Imelda. Um, thank you very much uh, for all these contributions. So, Dr. Chris, um, as we wrap up now, what's your um, final words of um, advice or maybe words of felicitation to team members, organizations that have been supporting and what we can do to take it to the next level as we wrap up, sir? My final word is... <laughs> yeah...
Thank you very much. First, I'd like to thank your, you and your organization for organizing this. I mean, it is very profound and very, very remarkable. I also want to thank uh, Men Engage Alliance. I also want to thank Men Engage Africa and our friend Reverend Bafana and his team. I also want to thank Men Engage Nigeria. I want to thank especially our chairman, Paul Peso. Yeah, we are with you. Dr. Chris, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, By way of, we have put our hand. Go on, sir. Hello, sir. Okay, while i um, waiting for the next few seconds for Dr. Chris to actually wrap up. Okay, you are back, sir. I, I just want to thank you. Yes, I am. I, I want to thank especially yourself and your team, AFFYD, for the good work you're doing. I only encourage you to keep it up. Um, the sky is not just your limit, it's your beginning point. Uh, Amen. For our sponsor, our sponsors, uh, Sonke Gender Justice through SIDA, we want to thank you for supporting the work we do here in Nigeria. We cannot thank you enough. For the European Union, we cannot thank you enough for the great work you're also assisting us to do. For Rock Flower Funds and many other uh, donor partners that have been so supportive and helpful, I just say keep, it, keep the good work going. We want to assure you of one thing, and that is that in line with SDG 5, Gender-based violence must stop in Nigeria, by the grace of God. Thank you so much. Um, it's been very insightful. Um, in case you missed out on the program, the video will be there shortly on our channels for you to watch. You can also go to our YouTube channel, it's Chagalinku TV, and you'll see the video of this one and previous editions of our program, so that um, if you missed any edition, you can also watch. I want to thank everyone who joined us. Um, Sheppy from London, um, Matthias uh, Martins from Amsterdam, um, Nelson from Ghana, and every other um, one from Enugu, Nigeria, and everywhere. You all sent your messages from. We thank you so much. If you enjoyed what you saw today, let's do it again on Saturday. On Saturday, we'll be looking at a very important aspect, violence against housemaids. Are housemaids not also human beings? All life matters. I'll be having a guest on Saturday, and we'll be looking at the violence that is on the rise on housemaids and what we can do about that. My name is Ambassador Emmanuel Gabari, and thank you for joining us. We sincerely thank you. And yes, to my guest, um, Dr. Chris, in spite of your very busy schedule, you were able to find time to join us. We say dialogue to you, and God bless you. I hope when we call you another time, Thanks. you'll be there to, um, <laughs> to help us. So thanks to everyone. Sure. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. And God bless you all. And take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.